Hey everyone, welcome back to Automation. I'm going to be doing this video in a slightly different order from normal. I'd like to finish designing the pebble and probably do the facelift of the uh, T-Rex. Then we'll be ending this episode with the beam NG part. Uh, the reason for that is I just want to make sure that the version I export to beam NG is one of the actual versions we're producing. Since I've not put this through the factory yet, I just want to double check that. So last time we made the Light Sport Premium version, as you can see here, it's hitting a lot of the markets we wanted. Light Sports Premium, obviously, it's also really quite good track. Uh, convertible Sports actually quite like it, even though it's not a convertible, but I will be putting in a convertible version. It should also grab the Convertible Super category. And I've also noticed while looking through this, this is actually a really good supercar and actually a really good hypercar. The competitive there, competitiveness there is 195. And remember, anything above 100 is good. And 97% competitive, that's looking really, really good. Uh, in terms of uh, what we'll be looking at today is, yeah, we want to do a full convertible version and also want to try a cheaper version. Uh, one thing I've noticed is for all of these markets, anything that's in any way sporty, uh, the uh, 98 uh, octane fuel is 100% availability. It's only when you start going off of that that you start getting people unable to get at those uh, higher octane fuels. So we don't really need to turn down the fuel going for our cheaper version is quite useful there. So anyway, the first one I'm going to do is aim for the convertible sports. So that should be quite an easy change. So I'm just going to clone this. And this is our convertible sports variant. And so, of course, major differences. We're going for the convertible. We've got two versions. We've got the soft top and the hard top. Uh, all the markets prefer the hard top. They can provide it. And uh, I will change a couple of things on the uh, actual fixture placement. doesn't really make sense to have the aerial coming out of the hardtop fixture like that. And then I will run through the various categories and see what I can uh, do to catch you after that. So that really didn't take very long running through. Uh, so really all I need to do is balance a couple of things for the new weight of the car. Uh, Convertible is always a little bit heavier. Um, and otherwise getting incredibly good convertible sport numbers there. They absolutely love it. And looking at our markets here, convertible sports and super, both really, really on board with this one. So I think this is a really great trim to go with. So we've got our two trims. And let's go for the third one. This one I'm going to base on the Light Sports Premium. This is going to be our trying to get cheaper uh, one. So we'll see if we can manage that. So here I go with the initial design. I am going to take another look at the engine just to see if we can make a slightly cheaper clone of this engine. So here we've got the affordability up to 62%. Ship isn't absolutely fantastic, but it's not too bad. So getting more than half of them. And so hopefully this will be a good model. And I am just going to quickly make another clone of this. So the biggest problem right now is it does have terminal oversteer. I can't really get rid of that without making mismatched tyres, making the rear have a lot of grip front. And that would vastly increase the, the price. So we just unbalance these for a second. See the uh, affordability drops 10%. And so I really don't think that's worthwhile. But I'm going to clone this just to see what we can do with the engine, see if we can make a slightly cheaper variant of the actual engine itself. OK, so for the new engine, I have uh, changed a couple of uh, things, uh, mostly because we didn't need anywhere near as strong an engine as we had. Uh, so main 
cost saving thing is I've gone down to a carburetor instead of mechanical fuel injection. I've uh, ended up going for a two barrel uh, single carburetor, uh, which ends up actually giving us quite a decent amount of horsepower. We're still getting about 200 horsepower, I'm sorry, 260 horsepower, but we've brought down the cost by about a third, and so that should be quite significant. And that's how boost the desirability of this car, or the affordability of this car, up to 69%. As for the car itself, even with the new engine, it still is terminally oversteering. Uh, but it's not actually too bad now, uh, mostly because it's just less powerful. Uh, but otherwise, that seems like a pretty good cheaper end of the market. So we've got our light sports premium, convertible sports, and light sports uh, regular version. So now it's time to try and put these into the factory, see if we can actually manage to design this and hopefully uh, turn a profit. So this is going in the Asrios's current factory. So it's the placement for the Asrios. And we might have to change something because I've just realized that if we go for monocoque chassis, uh, that requires steel presses. Uh, to manufacture. I'm going to investigate whether it's actually worth going for steel presses. The light sports category is actually preferring a all steel construction and it will make this more affordable. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to see if it's at all feasible for us to make a profit when upgrading to a medium factory with this one. If it is, then I'll go back and rejig everything. If not, and we're having to stick with the small factories, uh, then I'll go back and redo everything to make it um, a space frame instead. Okay, so from what I'm seeing, it is going to be possible to make a profit even with changing to new factories if we ignore the cost of the actually setting up those new factories. Uh, since the factory cost is going to be massive, buying those medium factories putting in all the infrastructure, uh, that's going to cost us 300 million, basically. But we can take that as a cost uh, that we can accept going forward to let us do things like make steel cars, and like make monocoque chassis. We're still able to make some money, especially if we can boost our awareness. We can push the awareness up. We can start to make some really good profits with this. So I'm not sure exactly what's going to be best. We could stick with what we've been doing so far, space frame, sticking with smaller cars, seeing how that goes. Or we can go for monocot and try and get this uh, to work out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a save here, and then I'm going to go back, mess around with things, and see how it's looking from the point of view of having everything in small factories. Honestly, the numbers are just generally looking better for this. I don't think we have the awareness right now to go to the larger ones, so I'm going to uh, just retweak uh, the cars based on the uh, having an aluminium and space frame design, so we don't need to go up to the medium batteries. And then I think we'll be able to do quite well. There. So the aluminium space frame, everything else is the same. I'm just going to rebalance the car, weightings, and so on, uh, just to make that fit. I'm also just going to export the Light Sports Premium variant of Pebble and to the MG Drive. We'll play that at the end of the episode. So here I've <coughs> arrived at the final numbers, and it's still looking uh, really quite solid. This is with our current awareness and with all the costs factored in, still going to be making hundreds of millions in profits, which is certainly looking really, really good. And so I think this is the right option. Then cars aren't quite good as the monocoque steel versions, but we're just not quite there yet with these. Maybe when Gazmia opens up, we'll be able to do more. Uh, but for now, I think this is the best that we can do. So looking to sign that off. There is a 200 million cost, 
I don't think I'm going to go for the loan for this. We've got a loan covering the other one. I think we can safely meet that $200 million uh, and uh, still manage to pay back the other loan and everything will be fine. This way we won't have to worry about interest or our credit score dropping any lower than it already is. So there we go. Uh, that was an 80-month build cycle. Uh, things are starting to get quite uh, complicated. Uh, but that's fine until then. The Azurus is in a good shape, making us a good amount of money. So hopefully we can just push through that. So next thing is, um, in only a few more months, the T-Rex is going to come out. So I'm going to fast forward until that happens, and we can see how we do there. So just before that happens, one thing to note is lead fuel bands are coming in, which is a small amount of issue for us. So we'll just have to make sure that with our facelifts, uh, we correct for all of that. So that'll be coming in in 67, sorry, 77. Uh, but hopefully that will be okay. And we've also had a quality issue in our factory. So this is our V8 uh, engine for the Azrius. Uh, looking at this here, quite a high chance of it being discovered, but if we just pay 2 million, we don't get any uh, other uh, penalties other than a slight hit to our reputation. Although if we do a quiet recall, it costs even less, and really there's not that much, so I'm going to do a quiet recall here. So right now, it's saying that the T-Rex is losing a huge amount of money, but I'm pretty sure that is taking into account the loan repayment. Uh, so we knew we were going to have to pay this loan. Uh, we're paying it over the next three years, so it is going to hurt. Um, so I don't think that right now is the end of the world. I do want to get moving and get a facelift of T-Rex being designed as soon as possible, though. So this is going to be our 68 facelift and as normal the first thing i want to do is jump into the engine project so there's really not a huge amount to do with this engine it's already pretty well balanced for a nice cheap uh, engine i've increased the rpm limit a little bit played with a couple of the settings we don't actually have oh we do have uh unloaded here i'm sorry i missed that looking at it so uh, I think we may have to go for that with this engine, just because that's going to let us keep selling this in the future. So we've managed to uh, redo that uh, to the 91 run with really very little cost to us. So for the premium budget, I've had to upgrade to a luxury interior uh, because the premium one just really wasn't cutting it anymore. It has cost us a little bit in affordability. Otherwise, uh, most of just balancing things to match with that new setting. There's not too much that we needed to do with the convertible budget version. We're really just tweaking a few things, uh, changing over to a uh, progressive gas monotube. Otherwise, hopefully, the most of this that we're going to be doing is improving our uh, factory and research and save a little bit of money by not repairing and refreshing the batteries. don't think that's really needed. The engine factory, since it's so cheap to do so, I will be... Actually, there's even less points. So I won't be doing anything with the engine factory. Since the car's taking 40 months, I'm going to target 40 months for the engine as well. So we go selling for 7.9k and 7.5k half the price of our other uh, line of cars should be making some very nice profits um, hopefully paying back what the loan is costing us uh, I won't be taking out the loan for this one so before we go ahead and uh, test drive the uh, new pebble I'm just going to advance time until we uh, release the T-Rex, see how that's doing over the next few years. So that small recall that we did, the public did find out about it, took a tiny hit, not really anything bad. So big news, Gazmia has just opened its borders, 
And so I'm really going to start pushing the advertising there. So Gazmia is a huge uh, market. Uh, not terribly much into what we've been producing though, but they will buy the premium uh, line. And so we can certainly push the T-Rex on them to try and get some of this money here. See, this is just our awareness now. They don't really know about us. Uh, if we could push that up, we could be bringing in hundreds of millions. And so I think I want to push the T-Rex line. And so it's probably drivability and comfort. I am going to start pushing drivability in a few markets. I think it's going to be worth it increasing our, our advertising in various markets just to really try and hammer home what we do. Yeah, so it gives me a really like drivability and prestige. So let's put in a fairly large advertising campaign there. I'm also going to start advertising power as one of our main stats. It's pretty cheap to do. And uh, we are building very powerful engines, especially with the new one that's coming out. And Gazmia being America, probably quite like powerful engines. So I'll push that there as well. Just looking here, we are getting quite well known in our home country, Freenia, uh, especially in the markets that we've been targeting. Uh, we're completely unknown in Gazmia and Arkana. Uh, Delu is certainly starting to build up, which is quite nice. And we're slowly getting there with Het Base here. So we've got Another issue, this one in our inline factory. I think I'm going to do a quiet recall here. If we fail, it's not too bad uh, hits that we get. Um, if we just do a full recall, we take a fair hit anyway. So at least this way, there's a chance. So I'll do a quiet recall. So anyway, it was the loan that was tanking the uh, T Rex's profits. We've just paid off that loan, and already we're now making. Uh, 2.25 million a month. And yep, as it's now being relaunched with its new update, T Rex is now making 5 million a month. Uh, in terms of how we sort of overall did there, even with all of that expense, buying new plots, building a new medium factory, and setting it up, we're still at 400 million. So we have nicely managed that with the T Rex. Now we should just be able to churn profit from this. Next big expense will be looking to upgrade our other factory to a medium. Uh, exactly when we do that really depends on how our markets are doing, uh, market awareness. If we can start to sell in larger, larger amounts, that would be fantastic. Uh, we'll just need to uh, keep an eye on this going forward. We are starting to get some awareness in Gazmia. So hopefully we can start selling things nicely there. Interestingly, just looking at our actual current revenue, our biggest earner is the family budget market. I think that's coming from the T-Rex. So selling into this market. And apparently people are just taking the hit of not having enough seats just to get a pretty decent car. Uh, we are still selling quite well into light sports, uh, even though these other markets are still giving us a little bit extra. I think a large part of that is just due to how big these markets are in comparison with our main targets here. So in terms of competitiveness, we're not really there. Uh, but there's just really, really big markets. So certainly something to keep an eye on. I don't think it's a bit easier to make money in this going sort of family commuter market. Uh, but this has been a lot of fun going for these sort of more posh end cars. Anyway, for now we're going to jump back over to uh, BeamNG and we're going to test drive our new Pebble. Hello everyone and welcome over to BeamNG and this is the Pebble. And it's looking pretty good in BeamNG Drive. Let's come through without any glitches. Certainly looks the part of a, a sports car. Let's see how she sounds.
definitely sounds angry. Alright, so let's see how she handles. Definitely tell this is more powerful, which is probably going to lead to me being a lot less good at this whole thing. Oh, that's expensive. This is a about a twenty-five thousand dollar car, and I just broke it. Stay in first gear for a while. This was tuned to the higher RPM range. I think a lot of the spinning out is just my incompetence rather than the car. I am not used to things with 400 horsepower, at least when they're not planes. On the straight. Oops, there we go. Spinning out again. A hundred and forty four there before I bend it. So I think I'm going to need some practice with this, so I'm just going to drive it around for a while and I will get back to you once I start smashing it into bits. Okay, so I've had some practice. I've practiced more with this one than I have with any of the car that we've produced. And the reason is, it's just a powerful little beastie. It can really, really go when it wants to. Um, and the speed really creeps up faster than I'm really used to. It can actually turn pretty good, uh, even at about 70 uh, miles per hour. Still got reasonable handling characteristics. It does fail above that. Problem is, I can easily go from nice cruising at 50 to going over a hundred in really not that much time at all. This thing loves to accelerate and it really is good at accelerating to higher and higher speeds. I can only get into fifth gear on that long straight and even then only for a second. So most of this time trial is going to be me trying not to do terrible.
So we are on the bus. Let's see how we do. I'm going to take this very conservatively just because I have been struggling a lot. At this point, I'd just like to get around the track without destroying myself. I'm just going to try and complete the race. And the timings, we tied, <laughs> or just, just beat the Azurus. That is much more to do with my skill as a driver, or lack thereof, rather than the car. The car is much more powerful, much faster. Sure in the hands of anybody vaguely competent, uh, they could really bring this down to well under three minutes. And so that's a challenge for all of you. I'll have the uh, link to the Google Drive of all of these cars. If you do do better than my time, let me know. And certainly if you beat the automation test track time, uh, let me know, either uh, down below in the comments or uh, in the Discord. Uh, both great places to catch me. Anyway, that's all for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed. Next time when we come back, uh, we'll look at giving you facelifts to both the T-Rex and to this uh, pebble, and uh, then just seeing where things take us. Until then, I uh, hope you all remember to have fun out there, a uh, happy new year, and all the best for 2022. Cheers. <laughs>